the IMF and the EU may be ready to hand over 12 billion euros to alleviate short-term funding in Greece. But there are, of course, wider questions about exactly who will take responsibility for a second bailout and how much they're winning to bankroll. Well, with us to discuss this is economist uh, Frederick Bonnevet from uh, Anthera Partners. He's also an associate of the Montaigne Institute here in Paris. Thanks very much for coming in. Talking Thank you very to much. Um, so getting Greece that 12 billion euros to, to pay its bills does seem like the easy bit because now it's going to get really complicated, isn't it? As you said, it's the easy and the uh, very necessary bit, i.e. this just covers the funding needs of Greece for the coming two months. Now, the real problem is that no one really knows what's going to happen next, which is why markets are, are so jittery, as you said, um, these days. Because you're looking at something like 30 billion euros, I think, in, uh, in bond redemptions alone until December, I think. From 2011 until 2014, funding needs are estimated to be about 157 billion euros. So that tells you a bit about the extent of the problem to be solved. Just give us an idea for we've got all, as Stuart said, all these different threads going on. You've got Jean Claude Trichet at the ECB saying, I'm not going to help out if uh, private investors take part in a bond rollover. We've heard from the Finnish government saying, we want guarantees if there is a second bailout. Where exactly is this crisis going with Greece now? It is true that there are really countervailing aims on the table. On the one hand, the ECB and public authorities in Europe can say, we'll just indefinitely uh, finance the Greek treasury, however uh, large the amount it, uh, it may be. On the other hand, it is really necessary to save Greece and to implement this rescue package and to design it well. So there is one language on the one hand, and there is a, a pretty much different course of action to be taken. And the, um, the dilemma for now is to, well, um, manage to r remain credible and implement something um, that, uh, that works, something and, tangible. And that's the thing, isn't it, right now? Because the markets are confused. You've got the agencies like Standard & Poor's talking about a technical default for Greece if this rollover happens. Well, again, the, this rollover thing is merely a proposal for now. It, it is being endorsed by governments individually, but again, no one really knows how it will unfold. Uh, the real problem is something called selective default, i.e., if we roll over a portion of the outstanding debt held by regulated bondholders, i.e., European banks and insurers, uh, well, what's going to happen with the, um, with the other securities, with the other bonds? Will they be in default when no one really knows? And it's really down to, uh, to, the, to the, the, the founding uh, rating rules of uh, Standard & Poor's, Moody's, and Fitch. Um, so we're moving into an, a situation now where Greece really is in the hands of the ratings agencies, at least, at least for now. Well, the, the, the real problem is that there's no pilot in the plane. No one really governs the, uh, the course of events. So it is, yes, partly down to the ratings agencies. Um, and also to the ECB, who could potentially uh, buy bonds on the secondary market, thereby um, reining in uh, the yields and the Greek, uh, Greek titles. There are multiple options on the, on the table, but no one really wants to take an initiative, which is, I guess, the heart of the problem. So we should ele elevate you even more for a moment, Frederick. If you had the final say-so in all of this crisis, what would you do? What is the solution to Greece? Should it default just uh, involuntarily or... Uh, France and Germany right in throwing what seems to be any amount of money at this problem? Well, I'd say two things. First of all, we need to be really assertive uh, on the fact that n it is not in our interest uh, to let Greece default. It is unthinkable. It is just not possible if we want um, the, uh, the uh, monetary union to survive. That is the key element. Now, on the means to be taken to implement this, res re this rescue package, I guess there are two different elements. The one being monetary, i.e. the ECB, or rather the, uh, the EFSF, the European Financial Stability Facility, buying Greek, Greek bonds on the secondary markets, thereby uh, relieving the banks and the insurers. And on the other side, yes, uh, France, Germany, and, the, and their fellow EU members extending those, these loans to, uh, to Greece just to cover uh, their basic needs for the coming months. Mm -hmm. So two things, on the monetary side and on the fiscal side. And of course, but again, that, that's not a question, we need to have this fiscal austerity package and those austerity measures. Mm. That's a no-brainer. That, that's uh, a necessary condition for survival.
Mm. Perf perfectly summed up, I think. I was going to ask about Christine Lagarde as well. She's obviously starting a, a job at the IMF today. I mean, it must be number one in her intray, obviously. But at the same time, she's also um, got to look to the, 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 some of the developing nations because she promised that she would do that in her, in her job application, if you like. True that. There are, there are two things to her mandate. First of all, she's proven um, during her tenure in, the, um, in, in Bercy as uh, the French finance minister um, how talented a negotiator and... Um, um, an economic diplomat, so to speak, she was. Um, and again, her predecessor, Dominique Strauss-Kahn, was a formidable managing director of the IMF. So uh, he's a role model uh, in that respect. Uh, on the other hand, yes, things are changing quite dramatically on the economic scene. So Europe may be central as, uh, um, as, as, as a target yeah. for those rescue packages. But in terms of uh, the forces at play, it is true that things are shifting quite dramatically towards uh, the, the so-called BRICS and emerging markets in general. Because there, so, are, there are people in the IMF, there are going to be people in that building where Christine Lagarde starts work who will say, forget Greece, let it go. Uh, look at the Argentinian example of 2000. The IMF was heavily involved in that. There will be people at the IMF that will say to Christine Lagarde, why don't you follow that example instead of throwing all that money uh, at countries like Greece? True that. And again... We need to bear in mind that things are very different now than they were um, perhaps 10 or 20 years ago, mm. i.e. now it's a three-party game. It used to be bilateral, i.e. The, the creditors and the uh, country nearing default. Now you have the creditors, you have the, uh, the target country, but you also have the markets. So it's a very subtle play, and we really need someone who uh, understands uh, those market mechanics really well, mm. and I guess she does. Just very briefly for us, Frederick, just going back to the Europe thing, I'd love to know your take on this. Uh, a German court today hearing uh, what is the beginning of a case from a group of anti-Europe uh, uh, campaigners uh, challenging the German participation in bailouts. Uh, did you ever for a second imagine that Germany, a founding partner of the EU and the Euro, would find itself uh, listening to a court challenge in Germany against, really, the Euro? I guess that's a very tangible risk. But again, if you look things statically and look at the law, uh, well, the treaties do say that no single country can receive help, uh, financially speaking, directly from uh, fellow EU members. And well, th that's precisely what we've been doing in the, over the coming months. So yes, we are infringing those treaties. But again, what's the purpose of European law if it is not to support the European economy and uh, further European integration? It just looks a little bit incompatible right now with this whole bailout crisis and uh, Again, all the problems. We're in really troubled times. Mm. Anything's possible. Mm. That summed it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Solving the world's problems. Economist Frederick Bonnevay, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.